and were succeeded by Homo habilis, which is known from several skulls and some limb bones from East and South Africa, but it's not certain they're all one species because many of the specimens, not all of them, you see those three pretty good skulls there, um, are uh, known from other scrappy material. Um, they are later than at any rate than Australopithecus afarensis, uh, overlapping in time probably with Africanus, 2.3 to 1.6 million years ago. Cranial capacity is larger, as you might expect from a later creature. No chin again, less protruding jaws than Australopithecines. The arms and the pelvis are unknown. The uh, legs, there's, there's now two partial uh, femora, the thigh bones known, and um, they both appear to be longer than those in Australopithecines. And then we come to the creatures sometimes called the erectines. Homo ergaster, the African one, Homo erectus, the Javanese one. And um, uh, erectus is, of course, of special interest because when Homo floresiensis was first described, it was, thought, it was uh, suggested that it might be a dwarfed um, descendant of Homo erectus. And Homo erectus, of course, is there in Java, um, not far to the west of Homo floresiensis. And they're both known by considerable material, they're cast by this complete skeleton, a very nice individual from Kenya. And um, a gaster is constrained between about 1.8 and 1.4 million years ago, whereas Erectus lasts to apparently less than 100,000 years ago, perhaps even less than 50,000 years ago, had an enormous time span in uh, Java. The cranial capacity, that is the, the <coughs> brain inside the brain case of both of them, is much, much bigger than uh, that of the Hobbit. And, uh, <coughs> not that much smaller, in fact, for them than modern humans, in fact, uh, overlapping, um, especially the later Homo erectus. And they have their own peculiar characteristics, bigger brow ridges, and so on, than uh, the previous ones. And I must mention uh, this surprising site, Dmanisi, in the Republic of Georgia, which is uh, the foot of the Caucasus at the gates of Europe. Um, and these, um, we're not certain yet how to classify them. They've been, of course, inevitably referred to their own species, Homo georgicus, but um, we don't know they're rather variable. Uh, the one bottom right is a uh, subadult individual. The other two are two of uh, what are now four adult individuals. It's five altogether, and they've been discovered at the rate of about one a year since 2000. And approximately they're intermediate between Homo habilis and Homo ergaster and indeed their brain size is intermediate as well. So for completeness, we'll also talk about Homo sapiens because one of the ideas of what Homo floresiensis is, is of course small brained, small sized Homo sapiens. The earliest modern Homo sapiens, just to fill you in, is from Ethiopia, it's known to, uh, as 195,000 years ago, and um, it's flat face, prominent chin, reduced brows, long legs, all the rest of it, you know, just look around. So here's some pictures of the Hobbit, um, uh, courtesy of Debbie Argu, who is also not a million miles from here as we speak. Um, and um, you see there is some damage, I'm sorry about the overlaps here to uh, the specimen. So it's uh, the main uh, consequence of the damage um, is first of all, that um, we're not sure how prominent the nose was, which is a great shame. And secondly, that the, uh, the damage has been the cause of some silliness um, in one paper, which I'll come to later. I uh, was also noticed that it's got a touch of what's known as parotid hyperostosis, which uh, I'll talk about later. Um, essentially, it's, it's uh, something to do with anemia. LB1 was first described as a female individual with the complete skeleton, but Bill Jungers, of whom more later now says he is agnostic about its sex. He notes that limb bones from other individuals from Lin Liangu are even smaller. They make LB1 look like the Hulk, he says. One meter high, it looks like the Hulk, compared to the others. Raising the possibility that males and females differ in size with LB1 in the role of the male. Well, okay, just to remind you, this is where people had got to 1.8 million years ago. All the Australopithecines and Havilines and indeed Homo ergaster were in Africa. And um, then 
By that time, there's these odd people from the Manisi in Georgia. Probably they'd been to China by then. Uh, and certainly there they were in Java, in Southeast Asia. And so 1.8 million years ago is about the, the time when we can be sure that people have begun to disperse out of Africa where they have evolved. Here's some comparisons just to, along the general line of human evolution, and you can see from then till now, you get smaller faces, more prominent noses, larger brains, bigger brow ridges, then they get smaller again. And the auditory meatus goes from small and um, rounded to uh, larger and vertical oval. And I put in the picture of one of the Manisi crania there for comparison. But in general, you see the general idea of human evolution. Um, and um, with uh, Homo floresiensis, we're talking with a creature of uh, brain size about intermediate between the first two of these. Here's comparisons of jaws. Jaws, through that series, Aparensis, Habilis, Augustus, Sapiens, get uh, shorter, the teeth get smaller, the synthesis gets more vertical, and internal buttressing disappears. And that's what these ovals and these extra pictures are about. Notice, you see, we're taking a sort of cross-section of the chin region, the synthesis. Um, uh, if you look at uh, top left, Australopithecus afarensis, you see the cross section shows that the, this bit in the middle between the two halves of the jaw is under strain, isn't it, when you're chewing. It's got to be buttressed somehow, or it's going to crack. And um, it's buttressed internally because it slopes backwards, there's no prominent chin in Australopithecines. And uh, there's the, the two buttresses are called the superior transverse torus and the inferior transverse torus. You wanted to know that, didn't you? But there they are. There are these two big buttresses. And um, you can also see them in Homo habilis. They're less well distinguished. And um, you can also see them in Homo agaster. It's a poor picture here, but uh, the jaw is getting thinner. And you can see the synthesis is getting a little bit vertical. And also in Homo sapiens, by that time, it's become quite different. You see, the internal buttressing has virtually disappeared, and instead you get external buttressing, which is known as the chin. And the chin, the chin is not a bit that's merely a bit that sticks out all. It's got a structure. It's got a ridge in the midline, and it's got a crossbar going across the bottom. So when you look at the bony chin, you see it what, what some people call an upside-down T-shape. It's got a structure, in other words. It's not just a problem. When you look at LB1, there you are, you can see what's the closest comparison. It's that, Australopithecus apparensis. Not even Homo habilis. So it's, uh, this is important that the chin of LB1, and in fact the chin of LB6, the other jaw as well, uh, is not really a receding thing. It's not like modern people with receding chins. It's actually. Um, it lacks the structure that all modern people have in the chin, and it has the internal buttressing that ancient members of the human lineage had. And that's important, we'll show you in a minute. So we'll just sort of look and see Homo floresiensis, bottom uh, left here, by comparison with the others. And although it was thought at first, it was suggested to be a dwarfed uh, relative of Homo erectus, um, it doesn't look like Homo erectus to me. I, I've uh, always wondered about this hypothesis. To me, it looked uh, initially like Homo habilis. Um, and uh, it, so it also looks not unlike the subadult specimen from Dominici, but not much, I'm bound to say, like the adult specimens. And um, Homo habilis is probably about the best comparison. Or maybe. Uh, and it's the same when you look at it from the side. You see what it looks most like. I think it's Homo habilis. Um, and it's got similarities to Homo ergaster and also again to the Dominici satellite. 